Welcome to Buckeye Turf Podcast. This podcast discusses the turf grass disease anthracnose. My name is Carl Dannenberger, Professor of Turf Grass Science at The Ohio State University. Anthracnose is a serious disease of both annual bluegrass and creeping bentgrass. The pathogen, now known as Colotoctricum cereale, was formerly known as Colotoctricum graminicula. Anthracnose can occur as a foliar blight or basal rot. Symptoms for both will be discussed with foliar blight covered first. Foliar blight occurs during summer stress periods when nighttime temperatures remain above 68 degrees Fahrenheit. During infection, extended wetting periods favor disease development. Symptom expression is enhanced with intermittent periods of moisture stress. Foliar blight occurs on poannual fairways. Initial symptoms appear as a yellowing of the turf. The initial yellowing is shown where the arrow is pointing. Symptoms progress to an orangish red blighting and if conditions remain favorable blighting of large areas can occur. Symptoms are often confused with heat and drought stress. In the late 1960s and the 1970s Annual bluegrass or poannual decline was often associated with summertime heat stress. It was not until later when research at Michigan State University demonstrated that the major contributor to poannual decline in temperate regions was anthracnose. The least symptoms appear as a yellowish-orange lesion. A sign of the pathogen is the presence of black fruiting structures within the lesion. Oftentimes these fruiting structures are difficult to see and may require a 10x magnifying lens. These black fruiting structures are called a cervoli. These cervoli often have small spines called CD protruding from the structure. In this close-up the CD are shown extending from the cervoli. Basal rot anthracnose is considered more widespread and devastating than the foliar blight. Basal rot which can occur from early spring through late fall and into the winter is a serious disease and will be discussed now. During the spring basal rot initially appears as a yellow or orange speckles or spots on poannual greens. Rarely if ever does it occur in the spring on creeping bent grass. In some cases, poannual greens coming out of the winter or early spring may exhibit the characteristic yellow to bright orange to red color symptoms you may expect later in the summer. In these cases, the pathogen was active through late fall and, in, and well into the winter. As the symptoms progress or as summer stress conditions arrive, the turf can start to thin and irregular shaped patches become more evident. The turf grass plants often progress from a yellowish to a bright orange or red color prior to dying. Although poannual is the primary turf grass attacked, creeping bent grass may be infected during summer stress months. Symptoms are similar on creeping bent grass as those on poannual. Besides the overall symptomology, signs of this disease include a water soaking, rotting, and blackened area along the sheath. The water soaking and blacking of the basal part of the sheath is more evident here. Upon closer examination, the crown may reveal the presence of the fruiting structure, which is called the acervoli, sometimes devoid of the characteristic spines or CT. Acervoli may also be present along the sheath of the plant, and in this case these plants are creeping bent grass. For some reason, anthracnose tends to attack either poannual or creeping bent grass, but not both, either in the same area or on the same green. In this photograph, anthracnose is attacking the poannua, but the center plugs of creeping bent grass and the interdispersed creeping bent grass among the poannual plants are healthy. Cultural control should center on relieving stress to the poannua or creeping bent grass green. This may include reducing the intensity of management such as raising the height of cut, reducing the frequency of double cutting, and maintaining adequate fertility levels. Promoting air movement and increasing light through the removal of trees has helped reduce the severity of basal rot anthracnose. The best management strategies are combinations, just not one adjustment. 
For example, raising the height slightly will help reduce the severity of anthracnose. If adjustment in height is not possible, look for other changes. For example, switching from grooved rollers to solid rollers will help reduce mowing stress during the summer. If feasible, switching to floating head mowers or flex mowers may help reduce mowing stress. A proper and well-balanced fertility program is important. For example, too much or too little nitrogen can increase the severity of anthracnose. Improving the environment in which the turf grows will help reduce the severity also of anthracnose. Providing sunlight, air movement, and adequate drainage will help reduce the stress to the turf during summer. Fungicides are available for anthracnose control. In situations of chronic anthracnose, especially if symptoms begin to appear in early spring, preventative applications should be made.